Hello, friends, and welcome to another edition of Empowered Living. My name is Yawa Hansen Kwao, and it's always a pleasure to come to you every week with wisdom from the Word of God to help us live a life that wins. You know, one of the things that I really have been excited about hearing from each of you on this series on elevation is the fact that I'm giving you practical tips and strategies to enable you really, really elevate. You know, we started off in week one of this series talking about my favorite definition of elevation. And this definition came from T.D. Jakes. And he said, it's when your ceiling becomes your floor, right? And so one of the great things about elevation is that it's exciting. It is over, you know, it, it helps us to, to, to think over what we've been doing over and above what we've been doing. Um, but one of the uh, risks of elevation, if we are not careful, is overwhelm. One of the risks of elevation is overwhelm. And I've seen this in my own life, and I've seen it in the lives of others. And that's why this week, we want to do a deep dive over what I think is one of the big ceilings for elevation, and that's overwhelm. You know, a lot of us have been working for years. A lot of us are real professionals at what we do. A lot of us have been striving for promotion in our lives. And you might be at the stage where finally you're, you've been promoted. And now you have responsibility, not just for yourself, but responsibility for other people. Maybe you're a mother or a parent and, you know, you at first were childless and you were believing God for children. So that was the elevation that you were seeking. You wanted to be elevated from singlehood to motherhood or singlehood to fatherhood, whatever the case may be. And now you've been elevated. One of the things that often is a result of elevation is overwhelm. I knew what it was like to be a mother for the first time. My daughter was born in 2013, my first child. I had my first child in 2013. And it was wonderful because I had been believing God to be a mother for years. And my husband and I were told that we might not be able to have children. So we were praying and believing and trusting. And by God's grace, we got pregnant. I remember what it was like to feel so joyful that I had a child, but after the outdooring, after everybody returned to their lives, and I was stuck with the major responsibility of looking after this child, I began to feel overwhelmed. Has that happened to you before? I know that many of us go through these peaks, what we call exhilaration, where we are thankful that God has elevated us to the next floor. But many of us don't think about the risks and solve for the challenges that often come as a result of elevation. And that's what the focus of today's show will be. You know, through this series, I'm exposing you to some of the ceilings that you are going to have to make your floor if you are going to truly elevate. In week one, we talked about procrastination. In week two, we talked about the need to deal with disorder. This week, we're taking a deep dive into overwhelm. I believe it's not God's best for us to be overwhelmed. You know, in the creation story in the book of Genesis, the Bible tells us that God worked for six days and on the seventh day he rested. Can you imagine that? God rested? You know, God is known as the omniscient and the omnipotent and the omnipresent God, meaning he's everywhere, he knows everything, and he has all the power. Even someone with all the power rested. What makes you think that you and I can get away without resting? You see, this is a lesson I had to learn the hard way when a few years ago I was so overwhelmed that I burnt out. I was unable to get out of bed for about an eight week period. And I was seeing a wellness coach who told me that I was suffering from what is called adrenal fatigue. It's when you overexert yourself for a prolonged period of time and your body becomes accustomed to having this uh, high levels of adre uh, adrenaline in your body. And then over a period of time, it just wipes you out because 
your body was not designed for overwhelm. You see, you might be listening to me today and you're so grateful. God's given you the new job or given you the new child or given you whatever it is elevation means to you. One of the risks of elevation is burnout and overwhelm. If we do not take precaution and make a plan so that what becomes a blessing or what is a blessing becomes a curse. We see this example in scripture when we see the story of Peter. You know, the scriptures say that the disciples were out there in the sea. They toiled all night and caught nothing. How many of you can identify with that? I know there have been seasons of my life where I thought like I was doing all the things, toiling all night and caught nothing. And for many of us, being in that position can be draining and exhausting and discouraging. And we get mournful and, and, and you know, depressed and, and anxious in seasons like that. But very few people talk about what happens on the flip side. And we see in the scripture when Jesus said, cast down your net, and Peter and the other disciples obeyed. They cast down their net and they got a net breaking harvest. I want to stop there for a moment. Have you been in a season where you feel like God is giving you a net breaking harvest? He not only answered the prayer, but he answered it and then some. You've got so much things coming at you. I know that I've been in a season like that in my business where it's like everybody wants to work with me at all times. Everybody wants my attention. Come and speak to my audience. Come and speak to my company. Go here, go there, do this, do that. And if you are not careful, you might be caught by overwhelm. You see, we see many portions of scripture where the Bible says that people would come to Jesus, but he was on a retreat. He would retreat and go and replenish himself. He would go by himself to a quiet place to pray. He was not always on the go, always trying to be here, always doing this and doing that. We should take a page from the book of Jesus. The scriptures say that once his disciples came to him and said, look, all men are seeking after you. And sometimes he wouldn't even eat with them. He would be by themselves. And the scriptures say, well, they probably assumed that he had food of his own. And he says, my food is to do the will of he who sent me. And sometimes that will is rest. The scriptures talk about the Sabbath being a covenant that God has with us, an ordinance that will exist forever. Meaning that if we are violating Sabbath rest, we are violating an important ordinance in the calendar of God. You see, when I started taking better care of myself, beginning to reverse chronic disease, losing the weight, restoring my body to a healthy weight and, and good health, one of the things that I promised myself I would never do again is to violate the Sabbath. You see, one of the strategies that I want to give you for dealing with the ceiling of overwhelm is institute Sabbath into your week. I don't know about you, but if Genesis teaches us that God rested on the seventh day, and if we see in the New Testament accounts of Christ that he was always retreating to himself, always finding space to be alone and to center himself and to be quiet before the Lord and, and to replenish himself. Can you imagine even in the midst of a boisterous sea, the scriptures say that he was asleep, right? So there's something that we can learn here. Overwhelm is not God's best for us. We deal with overwhelm by instituting Sabbath into our week. One of the things that I do now when I travel or when I'm home, there's always a day of the week that I do little or no work. That is my Sabbath. I was recently traveling in Kenya and I was telling my team members, put nothing on my schedule for Thursday because we were going to have events over the weekend. And I saw that it was going to violate my ability to have a Sabbath that week. So I chose Thursday and I said, look, Thursday, I'm going to be by myself. I played music. I did my worship. I went out and just did things to feed my soul. 
You see, God made us and he made us in his image and in his likeness. And it is his image and likeness to seek Sabbath rest so you were not supposed to be overwhelmed, not supposed to be have so much on your plate that you can't breathe. And that's something that I had been guilty of for so many years of my life. And one of the strategies that I teach to the people that I mentor or coach is my 3D strategy. You can find this in my book, The Leading Lady Way, or my first book, Daughters of Zalophahed, where I talk about delete, defer, or delegate. If you are overwhelmed in a season where there's too much on your plate, you have to delete, defer, or delegate. What does it mean to delete? There are some things on our plate that probably have no business on our plate. Maybe we said yes because we felt pressured. Maybe you wanted to be seen as nice and accommodating, and you've taken on more than you can chew in all humility. Why don't you go back and say, unfortunately, I'm unable to help you with this. I have too many things going on, and I hope you find help elsewhere. I remember I was committed to so many charitable works, things that I felt were giving me an emotional high and helping me score points with the Lord. But I had to understand that it was overwhelming me, and it was stealing away my time from my family, stealing away my focus on my health, stealing away the things that uh, were higher value tasks. And that is something that many of us are afraid to do. We're afraid to tell people no, but no is a complete sentence. You know, a few years ago, I read this wonderful book by Shonda Rhimes, and the book is called My Year of Yes. And in the book, she talked about the fact that she was always saying no to things that were not work. And she decided one year to just say yes to things that she was habitually saying no to. And she said something in the book that I love. She says, no is a complete sentence. Meaning, don't feel like you have to explain yourself to everyone when you cannot do something. Take charge of your calendar. Take charge of your life by creating boundaries around your time so that you can have rest and replenishment instead of being overwhelmed and overworked all the time. Is this good? I hope you're getting this. Because look, too many of us are overworked, stressed out, emotionally drained, irritable, and it's affecting our love relationships. It's affecting our relationship with our employers simply because we're not instituting Sabbath rest into our week. So that's strategy number one, institute Sabbath into your week. Make sure there's a day where you have minimal or no work and you're actually resting. You're actually doing things that replenish and restore your soul. In the book of Psalm 23, we see the psalmist David says, restore my soul. Your soul is where your emotions are. Your soul is where your feelings sit. And your soul needs restoration. And that's why it's good to have leisure activities that make you uh, re re rejuvenate yourself and restore your soul. So restoration of your soul is not just a spiritual process. It's also a practical process. For many of us who have iPhones or smartphones of any kind, you'll notice that if you have too many tabs open, the phone starts to slow down. But it doesn't mean that this phone no longer has good quality. It only means that you've overwhelmed it. So if you want your phone to work better, you have to close the tabs to improve performance. Similarly, as human beings, many of us have too many tabs that are open. We're doing too many things. We're all over the place. And therefore, we are capable of doing great things, but we don't do them because we are overwhelmed. So I want to encourage you, if you are at a place where you're seeing signs of overwhelm in your life at the, at the moment, I want to encourage you to do what God did, institute Sabbath. Make sure that at least once a week, you've got a retreat for yourself from work and too much intensity so that you can replenish, you can have leisure, and you can have rest. Going back to the example of Peter, when they went fishing and they got a net breaking harvest, they called in other ships. Second strategy is delegation. 
some things you cannot do by yourself. You have to call in other ships, just like Peter and the other disciples did. They were elevated to a new level of financial favor. They caught more fish than they had ever caught. But in that season, they would have been so overwhelmed and sunk in their boats if they didn't call in other ships. So the strategy is delegation. Who are the other ships that I can call in to help me with my net breaking harvest? Who are the people that can walk alongside me as I parent my children so that if I am unavailable to be present, they can step in for me and be there? Who are the people that I can call in in my business when I have more work than I can handle by myself? Who are the others that I can associate with in order to help me do the work? Who are the others that can walk alongside me so that as a spouse, I am not overwhelmed by chores and daily cooking and cleaning and other tasks? tasks. Some of us are so bought in to this idea of being a superwoman or a superman that we don't ask for help. This is the next strategy that I want to talk about. You cannot defeat overwhelm without asking for help. Imagine what would have happened to Peter and the other disciples if they didn't call in other ships, people in the other boats surrounding them. Please come and help. Similarly, if you're dealing with overwhelming situations, overwhelming schedules, if you can't delete, then you need to delegate. Who are those you can delegate to, to walk alongside you, to help you care for the things that God has given you so that you will not be found overworked, burdened, and eventually dropping dead because you just have not prioritized rest and recovery in your journey. You see, so many of us are sick and unwell. Many of the lifestyle diseases that have become so prevalent, such as hypertension and diabetes and high blood cholesterol, three of those conditions that I myself struggled with in times past, the research shows that many of them are a function of being overwhelmed. When you are overwhelmed, your body produces a stress hormone called cortisol, and that cortisol makes you retain fat. And so some of us are gaining pot bellies and being unable to be effective in anything that we do simply because we're overwhelmed. So if you want better health, if you want renewal in your body, and if you want to live to enjoy the fruits of all of the labor you're putting in, I want to encourage you today to be deliberate about overcoming the ceiling of overwhelm. You know, in our modern day culture, it's become very popular to hustle and grind. We have songs that talk about hustling. We have a culture of hard work and working around the clock. 24 hours a day, nonstop. And now we have the technology that enables that to be possible. Many of us, everywhere we go, we have our phone. We're responding to emails, responding to clients, afraid to be switched off. Many of us wake up in the morning and before we talk to God, we talk to our phone. And many of us, instead of bowing our knees in worship to the Lord, we're bowing our head over our phone. I have a dear pastor friend of mine who's been on a media fast, and I really admire her for doing it. She took 40 days off of her phone, off of WhatsApp, off of the online world, just so that she could reconnect with the purpose God called her to. And I love what she said. She said, God said that you are always going to the phone instead of going to the throne. How many of us are guilty of doing the same? I know in my life, there have been seasons where I've been, I've fallen asleep in bed with my phone right by my head. In fact, many of us sleep with our pillows, our phones right underneath our pillow. It's our closest ally. More than we call on the Lord, we call on our phones. So I really, really have been doing a lot of research for myself 
on how to set healthy boundaries, even in my use of technology. Now I switch off my phone and put it in a drawer at night so that I can have restful sleep every evening. Uh, most days I shut down my computer by five o'clock or six o'clock, and I'm really incorporating the discipline, especially when I work from home, to shut off at a specific time and attend to other matters so that work does not cross into my family time and I do not become overwhelmed and overworked. What can you do to make sure that you are not overwhelmed? I would encourage you to consider switching off at a specific time every day, waking up earlier. You know, Success Magazine did a series on the most successful people in the world, and it said that most of them wake up at early early before most people. And they spend those early morning hours meditating, praying, taking care of their physical body uh, through exercise. Um, and then they, before they start the day, they've planned out what they're doing. So they're limiting every distraction that can cause them to be overwhelmed. The other thing to do to overcome overwhelm is pay for help. I know a lot of us struggle in this area. I've been coaching women leaders for several years, and I know oftentimes one of the things that affects our personal and professional effectiveness is our unwillingness to ask for and pay for help. You know, many people do the day job nine to five in the office, and then they come home and they do all of the cleaning, all of the cooking, all of the things. And over time, they start to experience diminishing returns simply because they've not either asked for help from their partners or others or paid for help from third parties to enable them to, to have the help that they need in one area so that they can focus their energy in another. Now, I know we live in a cultural context that looks down on any woman who doesn't do her own cooking or looks down on women who don't, you know, take care of their, her kids herself or do everything at home herself. But I was so blessed by looking at the story of Abraham and Sarah. The scriptures say that she had help. And I believe that that's probably one of the reasons why Sarah was so attractive. She didn't look run down and, and overwhelmed and overworked. And she wasn't, you know, really struggling in her physical appearance because of being overworked. And I know that in many cultural contexts, people bring out religion to make you feel guilty for asking for or paying for help, but it is one of the most important success strategies for anyone who moves to the top. So as we talk about elevation, if you believe God is calling you to elevate professionally or elevate in your ministry or in any area of your life, you can't do it by yourself. And you will likely have to start paying for help. The higher you go, the more people you need to really, really delegate authority to so that you can focus on only your highest priority tasks. We see this also in the example of Moses in the Bible. The Bible says that Jethro had to warn Moses that if he kept doing everything by himself, he would self-destruct. And he called 70 other people and delegated some of his authority to them. When his hands were getting weak in battle, there were two people who held his hands up so that he could stay focused, right? So there is a place for being helped and some of the help you need, you might need to pay for. And I know a lot of us are just not in a place where we can receive this instruction. I, I know for a long time, I had problems paying people to do things for me, but now I find that by delegating authority and by incentivizing or paying people to help me do things, I can do way more things than I used to and be in more places than one simply because I've asked for and paid for help. So as you think about overcoming the ceiling of overwhelm, think about the net breaking harvest that God is bringing or has brought to your life and think about how much better you would be if you would call in other ships to support you. Calling in the ship for you might be hiring a nanny, someone who helps with the basic 
uh, running of your home or a housekeeper, you know, to help you be more effective in your work so that you can do greater things than you're capable of doing right now. Maybe for you, hiring a coach may be one of the ways that you call in the ships. You know, many of us are elevated to higher levels of leadership, but we are elevated after only being able to perform on our own. But higher levels of leadership mean that we have to start being responsible for the performance of others. And that's where coaching can play a big role. I've been working with executive coaches for several years now, and it's been invaluable. The lessons that I've learned and the accountability that I've received in order to become a better leader in my home and in my work. So similarly, if you are ready to elevate, you've got to understand that it will likely require you to start asking for and paying for help. The scripture says that everyone who knocks, the door is open. Everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who asks, receives. So as you ask, seek, and knock, you will find the help that you need. Sometimes we sit and we complain and we catastrophize about what we lack and what we don't have and what no one is helping us. But the truth is, if you would start asking for help, you'd be surprised at what people are willing to do to rally behind you, especially if you start paying for help. Now, many of us need professional help in our lives. And the sooner we own up to the fact that overwhelm is one of the ceilings that we will have to break through in order to elevate, the sooner we'll start making those necessary investments. In my life right now, I have been greatly helped by my executive coach, who's been working with me over the past two years. And before I had a different coach working with me on different priorities. I recently began coaching with a business coach to help me really reorganize and reorient my business. I have an executive assistant now who handles my schedule and much of my correspondence. And all of these things I have to pay for. And so I know the burden that some of you may be feeling that, oh my God, I have to pay for this and pay for that. And I like to encourage you to look at it as an investment in your future so that I can have the peace of mind to do the work that God's given me to do. Because I have other people handling different things for me, I have the presence of mind to, to do this radio show, for example. I have the presence of mind to be a more present mother and a present wife to my husband. I have the presence of mind to take better care of my body so that it continues to last me for as long as God grants me life on this earth. So I tell you, I'm, I'm giving you strategies that I've had to learn myself. And if you are serious about elevation, making sure that anything that was once a ceiling over your head becomes the floor under your feet, you're going to have to ask for help. You're going to have to pay for help, and you're going to have to learn how to delete, defer, and delegate. You see, in our growth as individuals, it's really tempting to just keep doing the things that we used to do that got us here. But there's a wonderful book by Marshall Goldsmith called What Got You he Here Won't Get You There. And that's really what I want to close with today. Many of you in times past were used to doing everything by yourself. I believe God has sent me here today to remind some of you that even the omnipotent God rests. You need rest. And in order to facilitate rest, you need help. And help comes by asking and paying for it. We see that if Peter and the disciples did not call in other ships, the blessing of elevation God brought them with that bumper harvest of fish would have overwhelmed and sunk them. And that's what's happening to many of us regrettably today. Many of us are being overwhelmed by the same blessings that God gave us. But the scripture teaches us that the blessings of the Lord make rich and adds no sorrow with it. Meaning if you're experiencing sorrow, it's because you haven't asked for help. It's because you've not called in other ships. It's because you've probably not learned how to ask, seek, and knock. Because everyone who asks receives. Everyone who knocks, the door is open. I really, really, really 
have learned this the hard way. I hope that you don't have to get burnt out the way that I did. You don't have to have chronic health conditions the way that I did before you learn the value of rest and asking for and paying for help. Overwhelm is one of the thickest ceilings we have to break through on our road to elevation. Because when you're being elevated, you're being elevated oftentimes as a result of work that you've done. And the temptation that most of us have is to do even more work because the work got us here. And that's why we have to listen to what the word of God is teaching us through the story of Peter and the disciples. When there is net breaking harvest, that's the time to call in the ships. So I pray for you today that God will help you discern what areas of your life you need to delete, defer, or delegate. I pray that God will give you the sensitivity to know who to ask, uh, who to pay to help you, so that none of the elevation that God brings your way results in your demise or results in sickness or results in some sort of disintegration of your family life or any other area of your life. See, we can and should be winning because the scripture says that the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and it doesn't add sorrow. Meaning if you are experiencing sorrow, there's something you're not doing right. And I believe what we need to start doing is the asking, the seeking, and the knocking. We need to learn how to delete, how to defer and delegate so that we are not living our lives in an overwhelmed manner. We have to honor and institute the Sabbath into our daily living so that every week there's at least a day where we're taking it easier, taking it more slowly, making sure that we're replenishing ourselves, not Run, burning the oil at birth, uh, burning the candle at both ends, as they say. So I really want to pray for you today. I pray that God will give you conviction through today's lesson, and that this episode, as we talked about the ceiling of overwhelm, will help you start making better choices. I teach a master class now called Treat Yourself Like an Asset because of all of the mistakes that I made. And I really pray that God will deliver you from, from destroying your body as he lifts you that you will have the wisdom to delete and defer and delegate as needed, that you'll have the resources to ask for help and pay for help so that your energy will be spent doing the thing that God's called you uniquely to do and that every other thing will be done by the ships that you have called in. And I pray that as we continue this series on elevation, you'll begin to apply all of these practical strategies so that together we will win by becoming all that God's called us to become and fulfilling all that he's called us to fulfill. If you want any further information on any of the resources that we talked about in today's show, please email us empoweredliving24 at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing from you. But until next time, I pray that God will help you to live empowered. Mm -hmm. See you next week.